Hello guys and welcome back to my channel RHD. Now today I'm doing something a bit different. So some of you may know I, I am aspiring to be a chef, opening my own restaurant and so on and so on. So I go to a college called UCB which is right here on my chef rights. Um, and yeah, so I've learned many dishes through my time but this is one of the standout dishes for me. Really basic, beautiful dish which you guys can simply cook at home because it uses basic ingredients. It's a French onion soup. Now, many chefs may use this to different tastes and change it a bit to their liking, but I'm stripping it back how it used to be, because the idea of a French soup was that it used very basic ingredients because it was known more as a peasant soup, shall we say. It used simple ingredients uh, that could, were long lasting and it would feed the whole family kind of thing. It, this was quite historic, but since then people have changed it to be like a quite interesting dish. So I'm going to take it really back, really far back to how it used to be. Now you can obviously change it at home, you can watch other videos and put your own spin on it, but I'm just going to show you the basics. Now today you're going to be needing an onion, one onion, oh nearly dropped it there, okay, um, one onion. I'm only making it for myself, so that's why I'm making one onion. Salt and parsley, which I think are good, I'll put them in a little jug here and you won't be able to see it, but yeah. That requires the taste, how much salt you want, how much parsley you want. Parsley you don't want too much because you don't want it to override the flavour of the, the stock and the onion. But the idea is the salt will enhance the flavour of those two. So, yes, yeah, so that's all to taste. You need a bit of butter. I don't know how much um, you'll need, it depends how much you're making. So I'm only going to need like maybe a spoonful. But say you're making it for five people, you might need, I don't know, 100 grams or so maybe. It really depends on how many people you make it for and your taste. I'm not a big fan of butter, but, well, a big fan of a lot of butter because I think it can override taste and it like changes the flavour rather than enhances it like salt does. So I tend to use a bit more salt than butter. So you're going to be needing a pan to put your onions and so on in. I've got a stock over there which I'm I will explain later how it was made and how different ways you can make it. But I've just kept it very simple. So you're going to need a pan for that. You need a wooden spoon, which is also over there with a stock to stir the onions and one to stir the stock. You're going to need a cook's knife or a preparation knife, so you're just cooking and uh, putting an onion. And chopping board. Now, always remember to put on the chopping board a wet paper towel or a non-stick mat because without it, your chopping board can slip. See, with mine now, it barely moves. So just that's just a health and safety tip, really. Nothing, nothing too bad. But if you cut yourself, you know... It's all part of the learning process, but just try not to. And yeah, so let's get straight into cutting the onion. Okay, so for your onions, you're going to be cutting it into thin, very thin slices, not dice, slice. Okay, now, so you're going to, I peel my onion in advance, just because I didn't feel I needed to peel it on camera. So get your knife straight down the middle, okay, tip onto the board and follow through with the heel. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to put your two onions flat, you're going to push one to the side for a moment, and you're going to curl your knuckles inwards, stop any accidents, chopping your fingers off, and you're going to grab your knife from the handle, and it's going to do a simple rocking motion like that through the onion, okay? So you're just going to keep doing that until you're all the way through. So I'm just trying to keep it slow so you guys can watch. And then, as you can see, as you can see on an onion, there's lines across the top. Now the idea is you cut through those lines, it gives you sort of a guidance, and you should have them just thin enough. Um, I can't really explain, that's maybe half a centimetre thick. And then if you carry on with that, so when you get to the fact where it keeps falling, flip it over, turn it round, look as you see, so it was like this, put it down, turn it round, and then you go again. And there's still lines there to follow. So you just follow lines, like nice simple rocking motion. Just carry on with that. And yeah, just carry on with that for both onions, and then I'll show you after. Okay, so I said I'd explain the stock and how it's working later, so here we are back in the video. I've got a spoon, stir the stock, you know, it's nice, keep it simmering, it's on the lowest level possible. But I'll keep the lid on just to thicken it up because I'm doing it in a short time. You can add flour, which I'll do later, unless you're, you know, you can't eat gluten, then don't add flour, that'd be a bad idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, so next, I've got my bowl, my soup bowl here ready to serve. My onions here, ready to, like, um, I would say sweat, yeah, sweat, I'm going to say, sweat off. So what you need to do is you need to grab the pan from earlier, which is just here. 
Okay, you're gonna, I'm going to put it on this front one because I don't want it to go too fast, I just want it at a decent speed. Can we get some olive oil? Just enough to cover a thin layer over the bottom of the pan. Okay, simple as you're just going to light your oven. Oven, what, why did I say oven? Stove, sorry. Okay, just move the oil around just to create a thin layer at the bottom. And now you're just going to leave that to warm up for a second. Because the idea is you, when you want the onions to go in, you want them sizzling. Like, I would say sizzling, you just want it to make a kind of sound. You don't want it to go in and nothing happens because then it would be going too slow a pace. Now, okay, so obviously, we've got the stock. So I'm going to explain the stock now. The stock is, you can make it in many different ways. If you're making a big stock in a restaurant, they'll probably get the stuff like meat bones. They'll probably get... Uh, parsley stalks, depending on what kind of um, like stock they're making, beef, chicken, vegetable, they'll use like that kind of area. Um, so I've got a beef stock here just because I feel beef stock goes best with an onion soup. Okay, and so what I've done, just to keep it nice and quick, I've used OXO stock cubes with two of them, with 380 mils of water, and I've used cold water because I'm warming it up here, and I've put in a um, bit of salt and so on, okay, just to, you know, just to enhance the flavour a touch. You see, you hear, you'll hear me say that a lot, enhance the flavour with salt, because I believe salt is one of the only things that enhances the flavour, where something like pepper changes the flavour, so that's, I don't tend to use much pepper. So, wait, waiting for that to just, like, simmer, keeping that, just thickening it up the whole time, it just creates more flavour, more flavour, and you just got to keep it stirring every now and then, a load of steam will come out, obviously, just so... Just so it's not, double check, it's not burning, which it shouldn't be if you have it on the low heat. But, now, pan's warming up. So, yeah. Just a simple test to find out whether it's ready to go in. Just break a bit of onion off, put it in. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but that's kind of the sound you want. Just that sound, okay? Not too hot, not too cold. And just slowly, slowly pour them in, so that oil doesn't splash everywhere, because oil burns, obviously. And if it's too loud... You simply turn it down just a touch if you think it's too much. Because at the whole time, you've got to have control over the pan, okay? So the pan can't have control over you. So the idea is to keep it to the temperature you want it. If you do worry and think it's going to be, t it's too hot and it's starting to burn, turn the temperature down and pour a bit of water in. The water will change the flavour, change the thickness because it will evaporate off. So as long as you keep it on for a bit, just in time to water evaporate off, it will just cool it down and you can have control of that once again. Now, the idea is as you cook more, you won't have to worry about having control because you'll naturally gain it. And yeah, so I'm gonna, ca I'll come back to this when it's time to add the butter. Okay, so just looking at these now, they've just got a slight, slight golden touch to them and they're starting to shrink. That implies for me it's time to add the butter. So just a spoonful for me. Yeah, oh, it's a bit stuck, there we are. And normally some people add like the salt and the parsley in with this straight away. But I would leave, I tend to leave it a second, let the butter settle, melt and settle. You know, just keep it moving, just keep, get the butter melting. Because otherwise you don't want to be mixing all the flavours at once or one will override the other. That's just a personal thing, I don't know. Some chefs may agree, some chefs may disagree. But I let the butter settle first, soak into the uh, onions and then... I'll add the salt and the parsley, okay? So, it, like, the temperature will cool down just a touch now. So you might want to higher it up, but I personally think mine is fine at the moment. But, yes, so they're starting to... If you look, if you what, if you ever seen onions on a hot dog or a burger, that's kind of the kind of look you're going for on your onions. And mine's starting to come together now, starting to shrink, you know... And that means in a minute it'll be time to add the stock. The stock's fitting up there, it's looking good. Okay, just, you know, just give it a little shake. Yeah, there we are. Just to uh, move it because you don't want it burning. But always keep an eye on your onions because most importantly, if you burn the onions, then you'll have this, the stock will mix the burnt, burnt, like the burnt ends that will fall off, go into the stock, and the stock will mix around the soup, and then you'll have a bit of a burnt taste to your soup, and that's not really what you want. So. Just keep it, you know, keep it moving if you have to. Remember, keep control of the pan. Don't let the pan control you. That's, that's a key, it's a key saying, I believe, um, which I was taught, to be honest. And uh, it's looking, 
like the butter is settled. So add in the parsley and the salt. Okay, remember to your own taste. And then just give that a quick mix. Just move it around. Cut the onions, cut the onions. And you'll know the onions are starting to be ready because they'll look as if they're soggy. They're not soggy, but it'll look as if that because of all the flavour it's taken in and all the glucose because you're caramelising them. All the glucose will start to come out and you'll be able to see that by how like it's starting, as if it was sweating. So it's a bit like sweating them off in a way, but it's not. So, um, so yeah, it's just starting to come together now. It's looking good. And I will come back to you when this is done. Okay, so the onions are basically done now. And remember, they're going to keep cooking due to the excess heat. So I'm going to add in the stock, which is also hot, so that will keep cooking. So don't forget to turn off your stock pan. I took my temperature down a touch because this is going to be really hot because it's been going for a while. Just pour it in, just pour it all around, and then just make sure you've got it all out. Yep, there we are. Just put this to the side for now on a different. There we are on a different um, hob, just so it's not still warming up because then you'll burn your pan, obviously. And then just move it around, just you know, just move it around so it's all coated, nice and fairly. And then from then on. You're just going to leave it to simmer. So the idea of leaving it simmer, it will thicken up. The onions will take the flavour in. All the flavours will mix. And to be, you'll know when it's done because you'll see um, that while you're while it's simmering, you'll see there's a, it will slightly change. The colour will slightly change, and the onions will start colour. The onions will slightly change. And when that change has stopped, that's when you know it's ready. So. I'll come back to you when I'm serving it. Right here now, we have got the finished soup. Okay, so it doesn't look amazingly appealing, but that was due to the idea that this was a peasant soup. This was made um, for bulk and family, with all the cheap ingredients and not the presentation, as you would for maybe a rich family back in the idea of France. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look as appetising as other soups, but... It is absolutely delicious. So I hope you give this a try at home as well as take some of the tips I've given you in the video. Uh, thank you for watching. See you soon.